What is up guys, Vector Designs here with, I guess you could call it, day 6, 7, 8, and 9 of GFXmas. So, I apologize for not putting out GFXmas videos, but I was way, way too busy. Like, by the time I got down, ready to record, it was ready the next day. And that was every day for the past weekend. So, to make it up with you to you guys, I am straying a little bit away from GIMP and doing something new that I'm sure a lot of you guys have been wanting to see. And that is Cinema 4D stuff. So, today I'm going to be putting out four tutorials. And first one is going to be on regular text and this is what you guys will be learning how to do so obviously step one is to get cinema 4d and you can easily get that by searching up on YouTube how to get cinema 4d I am using cinema 4d r12 studio so, after you've gotten that, we're going to go first of all, we're going to go to MoGraph. And then you're going to go to MoText. Alright, so, here you have the text. And the main thing that we're, you're going to be looking at right now is these buttons. One and two. This moves your camera around and this rotates it around. Alright, so after we've made the moat text go down to here and you should see attributes and then the text. We're going to change that, I'll change it to tut as in tutorial. Now we're going to change the font to I'm going to use this font, Batman Forever Alternate, Alternate, and you'll get that. Now to download fonts, it's very easy. All you need to do is drag the font onto your desktop, right click it, and you should see download. Once you hit download, restart your GIMP, and it should be there. Alright, so as you can see, they are spaced way too far apart. So I'm going to go into horizontal spacing, and I'm going to lower that. That's good. And we're also going to change the depth. I'm going to change the depth to, uh, I'd say 160. And so now, what you're going to need to do, is you're going to duplicate this. So click on MoText, and press Ctrl-C, Ctrl-V, if you're on a Windows, and if you're on a Mac, then it's Command-C, Command-V. So, now that you have a duplicate, you're going to go down to one of them, it doesn't matter which one, and you're going to change the depth to about half. So I've got 80. Also, your scroll wheel zooms in and out on your mouse. Right. So then you're going to take the blue arrow that you see, and you're going to drag that to change the location of this strip. As you can see, the green goes up and down. The red moves left and right, and the blue moves, moves forward and back. So, now that you have the second layer in the middle, approximately, you're going to go down to Caps. Click on that, and you're going to click on Fill It Cap. And you're going to change the steps to, I'd say, 
about three or four. The back, it, do, it's, it doesn't matter. You don't have to change anything. Except, change it to fillet cap. So now that you have this, it's time to change it to color. So you're going to go down to materials, file, new material, and you're going to double click on it. Guys, please excuse my mouse and it's loud clicking, if you can hear that, because it's really, really loud, I feel like. So, you're going to change the color of it. Let's choose a blue, so that's approximately the same as the example that I showed you guys. So here I have a nice blue. Now I'm going to go down to reflection. You're gonna, I'm going to check that. And I'm going to tone the brightness down to, I'd say, about 40. You're going to go down to texture. You're going to click this little arrow. And you're going to click on Fresno. And that gives it a really, really nice effect. Just change the mix strength to 70 to 50, I'd say. So maybe I guess 60 is the best option. Now you're going to make one more new one. Make sure you're on color. And go down. I'm going to choose a dark gray to blackish color. Same thing. Turn on reflection. Tone that a little bit lower. To I'd say about 40. Fresno again. About 60. And now you have your two colors. So. The first color is going to be blue, so I'm going to drag the blue onto whichever one is the main text, which in this case is Motex number one. And I'm going to change the black to Motex. Now, if I do a quick little render, this button, you guys can see what it kind of looks like. But we still need to add a lot of stuff to it. So what we're going to be adding is a light. So you see this button right here. You're going to click on that, and that's a one light. If I zoom out and look at it, you can see that the text changes with the light. So what we're going to be doing is you're going to have the text to light here, and you're going to click on this button right here. You're going to hold it down and you're going to click on array and you're going to drag the light into array this is a really really cool effect that I always do to my text you're going to approximately center the text in the middle of that lo those lights you're going to increase the radius of these lights in the circle And now you can see that it's a little bit brighter. But if we render it, that is way too bright. So we're going to go down to light and we're going to lower the intensity to about 50%. Uh oh. I'll be right back, guys. Alrighty, guys, I am back and I got a power source. It is now my my laptop is now charging and we can continue with the tutorial so as I was saying with the array light intense 50 intensity 50 and you're going to change the type to area that just gives it more light and yeah so there you have it just hit now actually we need to do render settings so you need to go down to effect and you're going to click ambient occlusion and global illumination 
go down to save, file, save wherever you want. In my case, it's desktop. I'll say touch. You're going to change the format to PNG and click on alpha channel. That'll give it the transparent background. Go down to output and you're going to change this to 1280 by 720 or whatever you feel is necessary. If you have a bigger canvas then I would suggest a bigger size. But anyway now that that is done all you need to do is click this orange tab here and that'll start rendering it. Rendering is going to take a while but after you're done you have your picture in which you can import into GIMP by just opening selecting edit open and selecting it file open excuse me but uh... yeah this concludes this tutorial and I'll see you guys today with another tutorial so I'll leave an annotation probably around the top corner to go to the next tutorial in case it doesn't show up in your sub box because YouTube has been having a little bit of problems with sub boxes lately and uh... yeah so i'll see you guys in the next tutorial which i'll be making right now bye